Hello darlings and welcome back to Everything Telmo Tutorials with Creative Vinyl Designs. So today we're going to be doing something totally different that I have not seen anywhere yet. So I've already sprayed, normally everyone who's going to do a an alcohol links wood grain paints their cup white. Now I did see a live a few days ago where she had painted her cup brown. Well the brown I have was way too dark and it was ugly and so I had an actual cup already painted this metallic bright bright gold and so I tested the theory to see how it was going to look on a cup painted gold Let's see if I can get all this out of your way so you can see it and I actually never mind all this this was just a this is a cup that's gonna be scratched um, so I just kind of played around with it and I actually loved how this looks so what I did today was I spray painted this tumbler the metallic bright gold and we're going to use Tim Holtz Espresso, and with no rhyme or reason, just we are just going to apply it all over this cup. And then I'm gonna seal it with the matte clear enamel. So before I epoxy, I will seal it. Now some say that you do not have to, that you can let your alcohol ink tumbler sit for 24 hours and let it nice dry, fully dry, and then you can proceed to your epoxy. Um, I always seal them because sometimes mine turn out like a funky weird green color and just to save grace I'm gonna go ahead and seal it before I put the epoxy on so with with all that said let's go ahead and just jump right in and again I'm gonna use espresso from Tim Holtz collection you can pick this up at Michaels and with again no rhyme or reason we're just going to put it right onto the tumbler And then I'm just going to use my little handy dandy brush and I'm just going to swipe it like I would any other. And just get this applied all over the cup. And see with the cup already being painted gold, I really don't have to work that hard to cover it up because unlike the white, the white, the white takes a little minute, which is okay too because that's where we all started is using the white. But I also don't think I'm gonna have to go back, you know, three or four times to give this a solid coverage and I won't have to use um, multiple different colors. I can just use this one espresso to get the job done. And I may or may not go back over it just to kind of darken it up just a little bit. But how light or how dark you go is, is honestly, it's a personal preference. There's no right or wrong on these wood grains. But when I saw her having painted the cup brown, that was absolute genius. Very, very clever but unfortunately my brown was just way too dark and it just, it looked ugly. So I had that one little 20 ounce sitting around and I just played with it to see how it was gonna look over top of the gold and it looked so good. So I just wanted to share this. If you don't have a brown or your brown is too dark, you can always use gold. I do want to darken this up a little bit so you see me going over it a second time. And I love actually how wonky this brush is. I mean, it's simply out of control, but I love it because there's not much work I have to do um, essentially on the wood grain effect. It's, it's literally just kind of having its way with my cup. So I have some sections where it's darker and that's perfect. I will epoxy this off camera after my seal has dried. So I want to get the bottom. I got a little something here going on at the bottom. Um, not exactly sure what, I don't know if the light can pick that up, but a little something going on there, but that's okay. We're just going to cover that right on up. No big deal. So 
so I'm pretty happy with that very simple just like two two times over it really um, and that's really it to the cup okay so for the first step I say this is completed and I will come back and I can't wait for us to get started on the second half all right stay tuned we'll be right back hey guys and welcome back so now we are going to wrap up this tumbler um, or not wrap it up but go to the next step so what we're gonna do with this tumbler is um, a crackle wood grain effect I've never seen it so I'm super excited to pretty much just jump right on in um, we're gonna use Elmer's glue and I have already got my paint situated and ready to go and I took the pinata this is the deep blue uh, looks like Baja blue it's very dark so when I mixed it in with my white paint it just gave it a baby blue effect so that's kind of what we're going for so basically we're just gonna start off with the glue pretty much jump right in and here in my sections I'm gonna take the Mod Pod brush and I'm just gonna swipe up I don't I do not want to do the whole cup that defeats the purpose this in this particular case we want it to be an ombre pretty excited I don't think I've ever I don't think I have never seen an ombre wood grain um, with crackle effect because most of the times like myself we just crackle the entire thing so I thought how cool would this be see how this actually plays out so we're just going to apply the glue randomly this is no perfect method here guys i'm just kind of getting it on there and then i'm going to let this dry not dry Jeez, louise i say that every time i don't mean dry i mean tacky we just want it to be tacky and then we're going to come right back in with our mixed white paint with pinata and we're gonna get the crackle effect and see how this looks. Okay, so we will be right back. Okay guys, and we are back. I just let this sit for just a few minutes, just enough for it to get tacky. And we are ready for our paints. All right, look how pretty this blue is. It was a dark blue put into white paint, which gave it that baby look. And we're just gonna spread this on here in an upward motion just so that I can get right where I wanted to have an ombre effect so just very carefully swiping upward Now, if there's parts right here around the top that I don't like, I can take my paint thinner with um, a Q-tip and I'm just gonna put little jagged edges in there just to kind of soften that up a little bit. So let's get some heat on this. And it's already started to crackle. Look at how cool that looks. So the heat gun is just gonna help push it along. Don't wanna stay too long in any particular section because you don't wanna burn. You don't want to burn the cup. The heat isn't necessary at all. You could let this sit off to the side and it will crack on its own. The heat just pushes it over the edge a little bit, kind of quickens it up. I am very, very happy with this effect. Now you see at the top right here, this is what I'm gonna go ahead and clean up. But I wanna give this a few minutes to dry and then I can come back in and show you how we can clean that up. And there's the bottom. This color is so beautiful. super super easy technique and instead of doing white 
I just added, I, I've seen so many people add paint to their Mod Podge and it has worked very successfully. So I figured there's no reason why my inks wouldn't do the same thing. Um, I've actually never tried this before, but I'm very, very happy with um, the color and the outcome. So we will be back and I will show you how I'm gonna clean this edge up. Um, but I'm gonna give this a few minutes to dry because as you can see, it's right like that, it's still wet. And I don't want to really mess with it. I mean, I guess I could, but I don't want to mess anything up. So I'm going to kind of let it do its thing and then we'll be right back. Okay, guys, and we are back and ready. This is all nice and dry now. So I just wanted to show you just how you can soften up these rims really quick. And I just use paint thinner and a Q-tip. And I'm not going to demonstrate it now because I did kind of go ahead and um, clean it up. Um, off camera. So basically just dip it into paint thinner or acetone and very gently just kind of go at a jagged angle and clean that up. That way you have softened your edges and it gives it a little bit more of an appearance of an ombre. Okay, so the next step is I'm going to use Mica Pigment Pigments Blue. I get this from uh, Glitzy Girl Glitter. It's a beautiful deep blue, and this is what we're going to do next. So in only in certain sections, I'm going to take this, this makeup brush. Very flimsy, very soft. We're going to dip it right into the powder. Knock off however much you want. Pick a section, and we're just going to rub it in. Just gently rub. You can do a little section, you can do a large section, and look at the bottom, I already did that. So I'm only gonna do certain sections, I don't really wanna do the whole thing, although I wouldn't really be opposed. And just find little sections and just rub. And in this case, you can go kind of back and forth, I don't wanna do the whole section here. Blow off that little remaining bits and gently just keep rubbing it in. And if you have it the way you want it, you can stop. Rub it in, soften it up just a little bit. Boom, that's it. Absolutely beautiful effect. An added little extra that makes this cup go the extra mile. So we're gonna do one more section. If you can see just off to the camera, I am putting it directly into the powder mix, but I'm trying to tap it off. It gives me a little bit more control so I have very very little you can almost not even see it very 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 little on here and just brushing it in back and forth if you want a little more you can add a little more if you want it just in certain sections you can do that too now I will tell you when I was doing the paint thinner and trying to soften up my edges I got what I would like to call like cobwebs kind of and so you want to make sure when you do that that you take a paper towel you want to make sure all that is clean the residue from the glue starts pulling with you you want to make sure you clean your top part up before you go to the next step or before you epoxy really important that you keep an eye on that I mean, just an absolutely darling effect. It just like, I feel like that just brings it right on over. And I think that's all I'm gonna do. I only wanted a couple of spots and I really like how that looks. So I am actually gonna get this on the turner and we are going to epoxy this together because I wanna use, I think I wanna go with opal dust which is uh, an epoxy additive, again, from Glitzy Girl Glitter. And I want to go ahead and epoxy this cup using the additive on camera. And then we will come back when it's ready for the decal. But I definitely sense it's got the paint and the glue. This has already been epoxied once that I don't want to risk messing up my design here at the bottom because the water will destroy it. 
Well, so I can't wait to get back with you guys here in just five seconds. Just give me a second to get my epoxy set up and ready to go and I'll be right back. Okay guys, we are back and we are ready and I try to get you as close in as I possibly could so you guys can see this beautiful sparkle here. Again, it's the opal dust from Glitzy Girl Glitter. And as you can see right here, this is all I'm gonna use for this 30 ounce. Let me see if I can get you in a little bit closer. Okay. Put that right into the epoxy. Mix that up real good. I'm gonna show you really quickly this. I hope you guys can see that. I'm hoping when it gets on the cup, you can really see the sparkle. It's so beautiful. And it, my gosh, this stuff's gonna last me forever and I use it so much. Oh my gosh, guys, I hope you guys can see this beautiful glitter. I'm gonna start at the top and I'm only doing a thin coat. I don't really wanna do a large coat right now. And I'm sorry, my hand is like legit at this point blocking you. I do apologize for that. Just trying to get a good coat right here. And then we'll work our way down. So basically this is a coat just to protect the mica powder and our glue and our paint. So that when we come back for a decal, we will not do anything to mess this cup up. This is beautiful. You do not have to rub hard. And I also did not seal this either, guys, by the way. I did not seal this before epoxy. But I'm also rubbing very, very gently, not hard at all. The epoxy really just shines this up so nice. Oh my gosh, it's gorgeous. So even though we've all seen this technique before with the crackle and we've seen the wood grain, I just could not help myself by throwing it together as one. I think it's it's another favorite. Like I thought my watermelon was my favorite, but now I'm like, I'm starting to second guess myself here. Just gonna hit it real quick where I can see little teeny tiny bubbles. Kind of letting the cup come around. A thin coat is all you need, guys. Oh my gosh, this is so beautiful. I really, really hope the camera is picking up all of the sparkle. You can really see it at the top. Now, I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but I can also see it at the bottom. But I, I'm pretty sure the camera is picking it up from what I can see on my ends. So that is so exciting. I cannot wait to get back with you tomorrow so that we can start decaling. Okay, stand by. I will see you very, very soon. Hey, darlings, and welcome back. So here we are ready for decals. And I've decided I'm only gonna do two, two decals, one at the bottom and then one like right here, I'm thinking, where it kind of grooves down. Um, just because I don't wanna take away from the bottom where it's crackled with the mica powder, I really don't wanna take away from that. So I just didn't wanna overdress it. Um, I've already done a very soft sand, kind of smooth out some of the bubbles or bumps or whatever you wanna call them. Um, so here we have on a water slide, a sunflower that I'm gonna put right here at the bottom. And I just want to just mention the, as we put this into the water, um, the water slides, 
So a lot of misconception about the water slides is that you you want to spray them fairly quickly. They don't they do not take long to dry, guys. Um, they dry very, very quick. So you want your spray coat with your clear matte enamel spray to be within three to five minutes. And then if you're doing a very, very large image with Plasti Dip, you want that spray coat to be exactly the same. Now for these small water slides, I obviously, these are clear and I did not Plasti Dip these. And also another, um, series of questions that I get. It's not really necessarily questions, but um, a lot of people are having difficulties with the water slides um, because they are spraying them in direct sunlight. So that's another misconception. You wanna try to do it in the shade as much as possible to help or to keep from the sun drying them out so quickly. So that's key to success with the water slides. It's very, very important. And not to mention, whenever you spray these, you want to use these water slides immediately. So this is a clear water slide, and I did that on purpose as I just wanted the sunflower image. I did not want it to take up the entire bottom, but I also wanted you to be able to see right through it. Um, so just be very careful. Just making sure there's no air pockets. And if you are gonna rub it and try to smooth it out, make sure you hold on to it. It'll get away from you. Okay, so here's the other image I'm super excited to use. And I want this image on the wood grain portion of this tumbler. So I was very nervous that this image would not actually show up. So here's a cheat method if you don't want to use white water slide. I am not a fan of white water slide, and I think that, again, is a personal preference. So what I did was I duplicated the, this image and then did it as a cut image instead of a print, which therefore flattened the whole thing out. I know it's super hard to see, but you'll see when I put it on the cup. So this is just printable vinyl, white printable vinyl. Let me slide that over. And then uh, we will get to placing this. All right, I know where I wanted to put it. Here we go. So we're gonna just pull this right off the back of the contact paper from the dollar store. I said right off, look at that. It's not even trying to come off, it's just being a show off. So basically just pull this off. Okay, and there's the image. And very carefully, we're gonna place it right where we want it. And then right in the center, I wanna push down and work my way out. So just like that, okay? And then we're gonna pull back, removing the contact paper. Okay, and then we have this. Set that off to the side. And then this image, also on clear water slide. So I don't put this in my machine to cut. I actually, sometimes I don't even cut it this close, but since I do have this background, I try to cut as close to it as possible. And this is a preference if you don't prefer, um, if you prefer using clear versus white. Again, I think white water slide is a little bit more tricky, but that could just be me. I haven't quite mastered it yet. So this is just a little trick to the trade. Very simple. And then we're gonna apply the clear water slide right over top of this image because I was pretty sure this image was not gonna show up on my dark wood grain. And we definitely, definitely wanted to show. Just gonna give this a few minutes into the water. And I thought about adding like little teeny tiny um, sunflowers throughout, but again, sometimes less is more. And I think again, that goes based on a personal preference. I just did not want to 
overdo this tumbler. I want it to be very, very simple, give it a very country, country theme with sunflowers. And I thought that that, for me, was the best choice. Hopefully you guys agree. When this goes on the tumbler, I'm super excited. Okay, it's ready. Slide the water over. And so basically, let's see if I can make sure you guys can see this. I'm gonna take this image, the water slide, the clear water slide, and I'm gonna slide this right over top of my printable vinyl. And I am not at all worried about um, any overlap that may hang over. Because this cup has been epoxied, you will not see my water slide at all. Look at that. Beautiful. Guys, this is absolutely the coolest thing ever. So simple. And so let me see if I can go ahead and just finish this up real quick and then I'll show you what I mean about what I'm not concerned about. making sure I don't have any wrinkles and I got to get the light just right. That's all I'm trying to do. And then I will show you. Okay. So for the most part, I'm very pleased with that. Let's see if I can get you in like right. Okay. I don't know if you can see that right here there's a little bit of water slide that's clear that's showing. But again, because this cup has been epoxied, when I re-epoxy this tumbler, that's invisible. You will not be able to see the lines. But look how cool that looks. It's very rustic theme, very, very simple. Like I literally won't do anything else to this cup. That is awesome. Also, these foam inserts, Glitzy Girl Glitter. I'll have the link down for those below. So we're gonna put this on the turner and we are going to re-epoxy this together. And um, so you guys can see the finished product. Absolutely beautiful. I love this cup. Check, that, check this out. And you can see that glitter. There's the bottom. Okay. So let me get this set up. I'm gonna actually let this dry for a few minutes and then I'll come back and then we'll epoxy. Um, until then, I'm gonna go ahead and wait, let this dry and then I will be back and we'll be ready to epoxy. Hello guys, here we go. We are on for the final coat of epoxy. And I already know, like I know I have a lot of um, glitter in here already, but I kinda sorta wanna do just a smidge more just to kinda cover up the decals. Um, so like I'm legit doing this much. Like it's, it's literally such a small, small amount, but that's only so that my decals, the two that I have on this cup will have a little bit of shimmer as well. So we're gonna add that glitter in and we're gonna do just a little teeny tiny bit more of stir and we are ready to rock and roll. We are ready to go guys. Beautiful, this cup is beautiful. I am so excited. I'm sure you guys get this in there. Okay.
So here I am just going to smooth it out. And I've got a lot of questions about how I do and deal with my rim and the epoxy getting inside the cup. So this is my technique right here. So sometimes the epoxy will get inside the tumbler and that's okay. So if this is the final coat and I'm hoping and thinking that it will be, um, when this cup is dry and cured, I will go back and I will use my X-Acto knife on the rim and inside the cup. If there's any paint, which there doesn't appear to be any paint, um, I would use a Mr. Clean eraser with some acetone and or a paint thinner and go right along the rim. And just clean out anything that is happening inside the cup. So I always take my fingers from the bottom up right over the rim. 99% of the time I have epoxy inside the rim from this method and that's okay it's very easy once it dries it's very very easy to pop it right out with your exacto knife so i literally made enough so i'm going to go ahead and go right back over this cup real quick and just use what i have no sense in wasting not enough for not really enough for um a mold and I'm going to go ahead and make this the one and done. I like to call it one and done. Others like to call it a flood, a flood code. I like to call it one and done. All right, so no epoxy wasted. And I'm going to go right back over it one more time. Very, very, very smooth ever so gently guys I am not pushing hard Now we're gonna get the torch and we're just gonna pop any bubbles. I have glitter on my decals. I have glitter on my tumbler. And though there were three coats of epoxy, guys, this was a very, very thin amount of epoxy. So this cup isn't gonna be an extra heavy 30 ounce modern curve. Very, very thin coats. If you guys enjoyed this tutorial, please hit the like button down below, hit subscribe, hit that bell button so that you can be notified of more new and upcoming fun tutorials. Um, I'm always thinking outside the box, always thinking of new things in which I can do. I hope to see you guys in the future. I'll see you soon.